Welcome, welcome back for more proteomics. So last time we talked about one particular secondary structure that is highly compatible with inserting a protein into the membrane and that was the hydrophobic alpha helix. So let's talk about another secondary structure that works just as well and this is called the beta barrel. But what we're gonna see here is that the beta barrel accomplishes something totally different for a membrane protein than an alpha helix did. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. So this is what a beta barrel looks like, and judging from the fact that the word beta is in here, you can probably surmise that this is a type of structure that is mostly made up of beta sheets and beta strands, right? And that's exactly what it is. The beta barrel structure is characterized by uh, several anti-parallel beta sheets that wind around each other to form something like a hollow cylinder shape. So uh, one of the most common types of membrane proteins that exemplify this type of structure are called porins. These are uh, membrane proteins that allow molecules to pass from one side of the membrane to another that otherwise would be excluded. And those molecules will move by moving through the hollow portion of the barrel so that they completely bypass the actual hydrophobic portion of the membrane. So what we want to do here is just as we did for the hydrophobic alpha helix, we want to talk about this with regard to the amino acid makeup of this particular structure, and we want to make sense of both the hydrophilic and the hydrophobic side chains. So we're already aware that if you have a fully soluble protein, meaning a protein that's just floating around in a fluid and not a part of the membrane, we're already, we're already aware for proteins like this that they like to fold such that their hydrophilic side chains will project outwards towards the aqueous solvent, and then any hydrophobic side chains are going to be buried internally so that they exclude water. Well, beta barrels are going to show an inverted configuration compared to what we're used to here. So since the exterior of the beta barrel, what I've kind of highlighted here with this red circle here, since the exterior of the beta barrel is exposed to a hydrophobic environment instead of an aqueous environment, then we can expect the hydrophobic side chains to be projected outwards towards the exterior. That's, again, that's opposite to what we're used, for, used to for a soluble protein. And then the hydrophilic side chains, what I'm trying to uh, kind of show here with this pink circle, the hydrophilic side chains will be buried in the center such that they are exposed towards the hollow portion of the cylinder or the barrel, and that portion is actually filled with aqueous solvent. So this provides a continuous channel that connects the extracellular fluid to the intracellular fluid. It's kind of like a big pipe that has water flowing through it almost. So because the porin or channel protein will span the entire width of the membrane, and because it is hollow, the result is what we call a solvent-filled channel, meaning that the interior, the hollow portion of the cylinder, is actually a very hydrophilic-friendly environment. And that's why we expect those hydrophilic side chains to be projected towards the hollow interior of the beta barrel structure, uh, again, we're trying to sh illustrate that here with uh, the pink areas, so the pink should be hydrophilic here. And then the red portions, what we would call the exterior of the beta barrel structure, this is where we should find the hydrophobic side chains, and they are exposed to the fatty acid tails of the phospholipid bilayer. So some examples of proteins that we have already talked about this semester that should exemplify this type of beta barrel structure, aquaporins, which we say are channel proteins that allow water to move through by osmosis, and then specific types of ion channels like sodium channels, potassium channels, and so on. Uh, the the ion channels are of particular interest because typically ion channels will only allow one very specific type of ion through. So a sodium channel will only let sodium through. A potassium channel will only let potassium through. And we're not going to talk about it a whole lot, but... Uh, we can make sense of that selectivity by discussing the side chain makeup in the pink portions here. So if, you per if this is a sodium channel here, 
and the hydrophilic side chains are projected towards the interior part here, then if sodium is the only ion that can move through, these must be side chains that are projecting into here such that only an ion that is positively charged and only one that is the size of sodium can actually make it through. The side chains may uh, preclude negative anions from moving through or they may preclude anything bigger than a sodium ion from moving through. All right, so that was a pretty quick video. So uh, that wraps up our very brief discussion on beta barrels. So uh, there's a lot more we could talk about with beta barrels. It's more than ne it's more than necessarily just porins and channels, but those are the most common types of beta barrel protein structures. So that's all we ended up talking about. So join us for one more video in this uh, lecture series and we'll start talking about peripheral membrane proteins and specifically how they get anchored to one side of the plasma membrane. Thanks for your attention and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.